you know, Dr. Balakrishnan, you and I, we come from the same school. And that school has taught us that we serve others first before we serve ourselves. And the problem that I see here is that with your government has um, amassed and, and, and focused all the top schools, all the elite schools in um, Bukatima area, right? You remember Whitley Secondary School was moved out from there. Uh, Swiss Cottage was moved out from there. All to move in SJI, S, um, SCGS, and, and Nanyang, NJC, Hua Chong, uh, um, everybody's just uh, um, amassed in, um, in, in, in the Bukatima area. And then we tell families that they, if they want to ballot, they come in within one kilometer of the school and they can ballot, uh, apply for, for the children to be in those schools. Now, when you, how many people can really afford living in, in buying a house in Bukatima area? Now, here's the problem. When you have education, it's the great leveler. When you have a system like this, when you put all your neighborhood schools outside of the uh, Choices District, and then you put all your top schools, you are going to get this widening of not just in, in society, but ultimately in our income divide. And that's not something which we really um, should be going towards. And the other problem is this. We have elderly people not being able to, to even make ends meet, having to sell cardboard. And then you have ministers like you making $150,000 a month. That is simply not right. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Chi mentioned as well about uh, education and as an educator myself, that warms the cockles of my heart. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we have moved away. When I was in school, we used to have an educational system where really there was equality of opportunities. But if you look at the schools now, you don't see that. And Dr. Chi mentioned one of the elements where we can actually bring about a greater equality by ensuring that the, the, the schools that are not the elite schools actually get a disproportionately higher mm -hmm. amount of uh, educational spending. Now, the other element which we feel strongly about is decreasing class sizes because I think this, uh, mm, yeah. out, uh, ironically, ends up penalizing students that are in large classes and are forced to take lessons, uh, additional lessons out of the classroom in the form of private tuition. We started off as a society of immigrants. Mm. And if you think about that, what it meant was we built it on an ethos of hard work, family responsibility, collective community responsibility, savings, and of course, education. The other point is social mobility. I said we started off equally poor. Yes, it is true in our transition so far, some families have moved ahead. But what is the focus of our social safety net. And I want to highlight a couple. First, we have been very, very focused on uplifting less well-off families. We don't believe in class warfare. We don't believe in sucking it to the rich. We believe in lifting, especially the less well-off, the most vulnerable, in order to achieve the equality of opportunity that you're aiming for. For schools, it's not a question of brand name or otherwise. It's a question of making every school a good school. And not as a slogan, but looking at the real investments which we put in schools. You have worked overseas, and I dare say every neighborhood school of ours is a school that we can be very proud of. Anywhere. I'll take on any country's schools, as far as we're concerned. So we believe in education. We believe in giving an uplift to children from less well-off families.